Taro Tanzania, my name is teacher Kaliguro Tonjige, the teacher of literature in English. Today I'm going to narrate a novel called A Lace for Father Mayor, written by Seven Endunguri from Tanzania in 1977. The publisher of this novel called Henman Publishers. So, A Lace for Father Mayor is divided into three phrases which are further divided into 14 chapters. The diversion of the book into three phrases is intended to show the major areas of the story. The first phrase is set in Tanzanian covering chapter 1 to 5. The second phrase is set in Europe, particularly Britain and German, which covers chapters 6 to 9. The third phrase is set again in Tanzania, mainly at Mkong village, which located at Songea district in the Vuma region, covering chapter 10 to 14. Mpenzi msikizaji, hasa mwanafunzi wa kidato cha 3 na cha 4 pamoja na walimu Tanzania, hapa leo naongelea eh, liwaya, yani novel inayoitwa Elez for Father Mayor iliyoandikwa na mtanzania mwenzetu anaitwa Seven Endunguri kutoka pande za mkoa wa Ruvuma wilaya ya Songea na hii novo imelenga katika kijiji kinachoitwa Mkongo. Kuona hii kazi ya hii ya bwana Seven Endunguri ameigawa kwa pande tatu, kaigawa kwa pande tatu. Na pande ya kwanza inajaribu kuzungumzia e, eneo la Tanzania na ambayo imeundwa na chapter ya pa, chapter 5 ambapo kuna chapter ya kwanza hadi chapter ya tano. Na sehemu ya pili inaongelea maeneo ya Europe ambayo maeneo ya Britain pamoja na Germany na yenyewe imekava kuanzia chapter ya sita paka chapter ya tisa. Na eneo la tatu imerudi tena kuzungumzia eneo la Tanzania katika kijiji cha Mkongo katika wilaya ya Songea Luvuma na yenyewe imeanzia chapter ya kumi hadi ya kumi nane. Kwa uwele kwamba hii novo imeundwa kwa chapter kumi nane ina vipengele kumi nane sula kumi nane kwanzia Sula ya kwanza hadi sula ya pili. Kama tuviona kwamba sehemu ya kwanza imeundwa na imezungumzia eneo la Tanzania ambayo imeundwa imeanzia chapter ya kwanza hadi chapter ya tano na sehemu ya pili ikazungumzia eneo lo, la Europe kuanzia chapter ya sita hadi ya tisa. Na eneo sehemu ya tatu imezungumzia tena eneo la Tanzania kwa kijiji mkongo kuanzia chapter ya kumi hadi ya kumi na nne. So let us look on general summary. This novel speak about cholera, a epidemic disease which erupted at Mkongo village and attempt to find solution toward this dreadful disease. This disease erupted due to the lack of clean and safe water within the village, which located at Songea district in Nuvuma. And some people involved themselves in conflict due to ignorance and the poor belief that they bewitched each other while the lead causa is cholera in epidemic disease. Mpenzi msikisaji, tukiangalia e, jenelo ya hii diwa, yaani novo elezi for father mayor, inajaribu kuongelea kuenea kwa hili kulipuka kwa huu ugonjwa wa kipindi pindu hasa katika kijiji cha mkongo. Ambapo wakua na jiuliza kwa mba, wafanya njia gani ili waipukane na hili janga la kipindi pindu. Tomano kiangalia kuna hili jangwa li, 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 la kipindi pindu lilitokea kwa sababu ya uchafuzi wa maji na mazingira katika kile kijiji cha mkongo. Tomana badei kapelekewa kwa sababu kwa sababu ile kijiji na ile jamii ilikuwa E, haina elimu sana kuhusu hilo janga la kipindu pindu Wanye, watu wengi wa mkongo village walikuwa wanaamini masuala ya kishirikina kwamba ushirikina umetokea ndo maana huo mlipuko wa huo ugonjwa umetokea snow also speak about poverty at mkongo village na pia hii liwa yani novo inajaribu kuzungumzia umaskini katika kijiji cha mkongo the novelist show father moyo who is a parish priest of Mkongo Catholic Mission, station trying to solve the problem of cholera epidemic disease by telling the villagers to find themselves to the empty kerosene tin and distribute to themselves. Mpenzi msikisaji, hasa mwanafuzi wa kidato cha tatu na cha ane. He, uwe mwandishi wa hii novo, Seven Dunguri, ametuonye share padri, ya nae ito wa Fazamoyo, ambaye alikuwa uh, yuko katika 
mkongo kasori kimisheni ambaye alijaribu kutatua huu mgogoro au ugonjwa wa kolera ugonjwa wa kipindu pindu na kuambia wana kijiji kwamba wata, kila mtu apate e, galoni ambayo liko tupu la mafuta ya taa ambapo kila mtu a, apewe he insists by telling the villagers that they have to use this empty kerosene tin for keeping safe bold drinking water anazidi kuambia kwamba kila mtu achukue hilo galoni tupu ambalo galoni tupu aweke maji safi kwa ajili ya kunywa he continue telling the villagers to wash their hands with soap before eating any kind of food bado anazidi kuambia wana kijiji huyu padri father moyo anawaambia kwamba waendelee kuambia na wana kijiji wenzao wazidi kutoa elimu ya kuosha unawa mikono kabla hajanywa hajala wala kunywa kitu but the problem is that many people who live at mkongo village are very poor hence they can't afford even to buy soap and the empty kerosene tin bado nazidi kuambia kwamba kuna matatizo makubwa sana nazidi kujitokeza katika kijiji cha mkongo watu wengi walikuwa ni maskini hawezi wakanunua hata hilo gallon dumu la lita tano kwa ajili ya kuhifadhia maji ya kunywa this situation make father moyo to enter into personal conflict on how he should do in order to make his people safe mwisho wa siku ikawa imejitokeza akajitokea yeye akawa na mgogoro binafsi kutoka moyo wake anajiuza kivipi hawa watu wataweza eh, kupata hii huduma ya maji safi na salama also the novelist speak about conflict which occur in the society due to the poor belief na pia mwandishi anazidi kutuambia kwamba zidi ya huu mgogoro unaozidi kuibuka kati ya wana kijiji na imani zao za kishirikina wanaoamini kwamba hiyo ugonjwa wa kipindupindu unatokana na kishirikina this evidence is a novel open with a special sunday prayer when father Mo is inside the church with other worshipers full of grief thinking about epidemic disease nasidi kuambia kwamba ndani ya hii riwaya siku ya jumapili wanaomba huyu padri Father Moyo yuko ndani ya kanisa na waumini wake wanafikiria kivipi ili janga la kipindupindu litaondoka Father Moyo is counting not less than 20 of his prisoners dead and bad in the recent past uh, eh, tunazidi kuambia kwamba huyu padri Father Moyo anazidi kuhesabu watu eh, wasiopungua 20 wamekufa na hili janga la kipindupindu so cholera epidemic had left behind a number widows and orphan hili janga la kipindupindu limeacha e, idadi ya wajane wengi sana pamoja na watoto ya hatima kwa sababu watu waliuawa wengi this calamity has brought tense and the great conflict in the society for instance the conflict between father moyo and the young man odofo todos e, hili hili janga inazidi kuonekana ni tatizo kubwa sana na migogoro mikubwa katika ile jamii. Kwa mfano, kuna mgogoro ulioibuka kati ya Father Moyo pamoja na kijana mdogo sana anayeamini masuala ya kishina na kuwadanganya watu anayeitwa Adolfo Theodos. This conflict image when Father Moyo is in church proceed with the misa. Then the young man Adolfo Theodos come and complain about his son illness. Mgogoro unazidi kuibuka Uh, ikiwa father moyo yuko ndani anaendelea ndani ya kanisa anaendelea kutoa misa huyu kijana akaja akazidi kuambia na kulalamika kuhusu mtoto wake jinsi anavyoumwa he was kissing his grandmother as a witch so he followed her in church where she was playing adolf trolls claim she killed my sister as months and now na alikuja maeneo ya kanisani huyu kijana anaitwa adolf ndani ya kanisa kumfata yule bibi yake na kumwambia kwamba ndo yeye aliyemuua mtoto wake. Father Moyo is pleased is trying to escape Adolfo's grandmother not to be beaten by her grandson Adolfo. Anazidi kuambia kwamba Father Moyo yeye eh, alikuwa na, ni anasalisha bazidi kumshawishi na kumwambia huyo kijana Adolfo kumwambia kwamba eh, ache, aache kumtukana na kumtishia bibi yake. This act annoys Adolf and start ch- changing word with father more by saying you can say what you like you are pleased and it is your duty to say such things 
you have no pro child children therefore you can't not understand the abuse of having a sick child of your own you cannot feel the pains of grief for losing a child tunazidi kuambia kwamba huyu kijana azidi kumtupia maneno makali ya zidi ya huyu padri father mo na kumwambia kwamba wewe ndio maana hujui uchungu wa mwana hujui e, bado wewe hujaza hata mtoto ndio maana huwezi kujua mambo yanayoendelea zidi ya familia so chat was not be which but suffering from the hair and the vomiting but the people always believe in superstition hapo tunaweza kuambia kwamba mtoto yeye alikuwa hajalogwa lakini kwa mtoto alikuwa anasumbuliwa na maswala ya homa mbalimbali ilikuwa mbali, ina inamtusumbua lakini watu kwa sababu wanaamini katika maswala ya kishirikina as father more try to find the permanent solution to the villages against cholera epidemic disease father huyo padri father more yeye eh, akazidi kutafuta njia mbadala ya kuisaidia ile jamii hiyo ndokane na hiyo yanga la kipindu pindu he decided to go to find bishop makita and tell him about his mission to Europe looking for assistance from their benefactor hazidi kuhusiana na watu kutoka ulaya kuzidi ya kutatua lile tatizo as they also narrated the conversation which is going on between father mo and bishop makita kuna mwandishi yeye akazidi kutuonyesha mawasiliano zidi ya hawa watu wawili ambao ni Father Moyo na mtu mwingine wa Ulaya ambaye anaitwa Bishop Makita. I want your advice. I have been thinking of traveling to Europe to see my benefactors. I have a lot of sending invitation from them, you know. At first Bishop Makita is very difficult to agree with Father Moyo, Jan, but after a long time he is convinced. E, ile siku ya kwanza Bishop Makiza alikuwa ni ngumu sana kubaliana na, ma, na na safari ya Father Moyo lakini mwisho wa siku alimshawishi. Bishop Makita agreed to allow Father Moyo to go in Europe. Mwisho wa siku huyu Bishop ambaye ni Bishop Makita akamkubalia eh huyu Father Moyo aende Europe kwa lengo la kufata eh, madawa ya kutibu maji. All right, Father Dennis Moyo, I shall pay your fare and you can make your travel arrangement as you like said. The shop market as he closed the door. Therefore, after a few weeks, Father Dennis Moyo started his journey from Dar es Salaam to Europe, particular Britain and Germany. Mwisho wa siku siku chache, huyu padri Father Dennis Moyo aliendelea na safari yake kuchukua safari kutoka Dar es Salaam kwenda Ulaya hasasa eneo la Britain pamoja na Germany Ujerumani. At the airport hapo tunaanza tumefika eneo la uwanja wa ndege. While Father Moyo is at the airport he met a group of prigim who are traveling to Mecca for pilgrimage. Hapo tunaanza kuona tunaanza kuambia kwamba katika eneo la uwanja wa ndege kuna watu mbali magofu mbalimbali ya watu wakona safiri kwenda sehemu za nje. In the group there is somebody who is not new to him. So he approached the man he thought he knew and greeted him we are we are introduced to their conversation. I seem to have seen you before said Father Moyo shaking hands with the man. Where did you hail from Mze? I'm Songea Songea answered the man. Of course that is why I thought I had seen you before. I'm also from Songea. I'm the party of Mkongo Church Pad Dennis Moyo. Hapo tunaweza kuambia kwamba eh huyu padri Father Dennis Moyo alipoenda sehemu ya uwanja wa ndege akakutana na watu, na watu mbalimbali. Kuna mmoja ya huyo mtu aliyekuwa anasafiri wakawa wamejuana kumbe ni padri mwenzake anayefanya na ye eneo la Songea. Bwanali immediately block off his conversation with Father Moyo and rejoin his fellow prisoners. Father Moyo also stood up and collect his handbag. Father Moyo got on board to Europe. His mission is successful done first in Birmingham, Birmingham and then in Manchi. Hapo tunaanza kuambia mwisho wa siku Father Moyo akawa amefika Ulaya kwa ajili ya shughuli mbalimbali kufuatilia madawa kwa ajili ya kutibu maji. Father Moyo got a friend who introduced himself as James O. Blame. This was a British young man who deals with drugs and hashish. Mwisho wa siku Father Moyo akakutana, hapatana na rafiki yake ambaye 
alimwonyesha kwa jina lake anaitwa James O Blame ambaye ni kijana wa Uingereza ambaye ndio alikuwa na dini masuala ya madawa pamoja na hashishi This young man came from Kalabrin gang which deal with drugs all over the world including China, Malaya, India, Mexico and Tanzania who has a growing opium, marijuana and other drugs. Huyo kijana alikuja na Kalabrin gang ambaye alikuwa na dini na masuala ya madawa duniani nzima iwemo China, Malaya, India, Mexico na pamoja na Tanzania. The Kalabrin organization has a huge network in transportation of huge of drugs example on the sea lord and ever he carbine ni organization mbalimbali ambayo ilikuwa inasambaza na kusafisha madawa mbalimbali kupitia eh leli kupitia nani anga usafiri wa anga majini pamoja na barabara James O'Brien succeeded to export his hash by hiding a hashish packet in the Green label written Tanzania tea in two father more bag. Furthermore did not notice about the drug with him until his bag is caught at Charles de Gaulle's airport. After short investigation which police father has seen innocent and released in Britain to answer same as furthermore Mefika Wingereza. Furthermore was captured by drug dealers from Carabin gang they have beaten him severe to an extent that he lost conscious furthermore found himself in gang house after that it was on the alipofika uingereza huyu padri alikamatwa kwa sababu ya yale madawa yalikuwa yamebeba yalikuwa sio madawa mazuri he met dr bennett a scientist and a medical doctor in a cabin organization alikutana na dr anaitwa bennett mwanasayansi ambaye ana dini masuala ya udaktari. Dr. Bennett had joined the Carabin organization 10 years past. Mshusiku akawa amejiunga ali huyu tunaambia kwamba udaktari Bennett yeye alijiunga na hiyo organization ya Carabin zaidi ya miaka 20 iliyopita. In fact, the brain behind the organization he helped Father Moyo to escape from the gang's hands. Dr. Bennett said to Father Moyo I akana mshauri huyu na ni Dr. Fazamoy anaomba kwamba atakuwa aepukane na hili gurupu maana yenyewe inauza madawa sio mazuri madawa ya kulevya. As you for as you are safe conduct out of here I shall make the necessary preparation and by midnight tonight you shall be free. Before Fazamoy Moyo had left left he met Dr. Bennett his severe at the best Switzerland. In the entire allegation furthermore is trying to convince Dr. Bennett by any means to go to Africa particular in Tanzania. Mshwa siku padri furthermore akaanza kumshawishi Dr. Bennett aje hasasa aje Africa hasasa eneo la Tanzania kwa ajili ya kutibu hili ugonjwa wa kipindupindu. At the end Dr. Bennett agreed and promised to work in one of the missions hospitals or dispensary at Mkongo. Mwisho wa siku huyu daktari Bennett akawa amekubaliana kuja safari moja na huyu padri eh, Fadhili Moyo. As it is shown in the convey hapo tumeonyesha kwa mazungumzo yao wanaongea. How about coming to Africa with me? Sound like good idea. Would be welcome. Why of course? I you could give the suggestion serious thought. I would do everything to help i like the idea of working in africa but i would have to plan the, the move carefully so that when i get there i would be able to work a hospital or dispensary of some kind haya yako ni maneno ya daktari aliyokuwa anaongea sasa tuangalie upande mwingine katika nchi ya ujerumani hapo tunapewa sehemu ya ujerumani in german at the benedict monastery of saint otilian where most of the white missionaries in Songkhia diocese had come from end place where first Vitas mayor is bad hapa tunapewa eneo la ujerumani hapa tunaambia kwamba huyu dr bennett yuko katika missionary ya wazungu katika eneo la Songkhia diocese amekuja pamoja na father Vitas mayor is kwamba mpira ile eneo kwamba kuna padri mmoja yeye aliwawa katika missionary ya Songea Diocese ambayo ilikuwa ni padri Maya. 
One morning, as Father Moyo was passing through a small village on his way to neighboring town, Father Moyo noticed some loving flowers displayed outside the window. He was near Father Moyo alipita kwenye kijiji kidogo sana ambapo kilikuwa ni karibu na eneo na mjini Father Moyo aliyapenda maua mazuri sana alikuwa anapitishwa uh, outside nje ya um, uh, dirisha he was informed that that was a small time frost shop he stopped at the shop and asked the frost to prepare a lace of connection and lots for him wale watu wanaoandaa maua kwa ajili ya watu ya kwa ajili ya mapambo ya makaburi akawa ametoa order kwa mtu anayetengeneza maua kwa ajili ya kwenda kuweka kwenye kaburi kwamba amtengeneze hayo maua ambayo ni elesi maelesi mkumbuka wanafunzi wa elesi maana yake kwamba haya ni maua yanayowekwa kwenye kaburi kwa mtu aliyekufa au aliyeuawa this is to be a elesi for father Vitas Maya this symbol of honor and respect of Father Vitas Maya mwisho wa siku huyu padri moyo akayaita akasema kwamba hii itakuwa ni elesi for Father Vitas Maya haya ni maua yatakuwa kwa ajili ya huyu padri Vitas Maya Father Maya aliyeuawa ina inaonyesha kwamba ni upendo na heshima kwa huyu mtu aliyekufa ni mtu wa muhimu sana baka tumkongo vile ile 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 kaburi au mtu aliyeuawa huyu hapa ilikuwa ni sehemu ya nchi ya Ujerumani. Sasa tunarudishwa tena katika kijiji cha Songea. Baka tu Mkongo village. Yako amerudi sasa kijiji cha Mkongo village ni katika wilaya ya Songea. Due to cholera epidemic disease, hence less shift and mada. Kwa sababu ya hili ukigonjwa la upindupindu wez walikuwa bado wanazidi kufanya maovu yao. On September Papa Dreus gang invited Blaza Nyoka and took cartoon of medicine. Hapo katika ilikuwa ni tarehe tisa mwezi wa tisa. Papa Dreus gang yeye alimvamia kaka yake na nyoka na kuchukua cartoon ya dawa. The, no, the notable event in this cause is the murder of Father Moyo, house servant who code kalistos sasa katika tukio lililotokea ilikuwa inazungumzia hasa sasa kulikuwa kuna mauaji yametokea katika nyumbani kwa huyu padri moyo mtumishi wake amfanya kazi alikuwa ni mfanyakazi alikuwa anafanya kazi kwa huyu padri father moyo alikuwa aliuawa ile siku the man was murdered on the way trying to save the stolen medicine yule mtu aliuliwa kwa sababu alikuwa anajaribu kuzuia ile dawa kwa ajili ya kutibu maji ili yasinde ili dawa isije kaidwa au isije ikaenda na wale wezi mwisho wa siku wale wezi walimuua his kid by one of the papa drews gang muhammed said hiki ni kikundi cha watu ambao ni wahalifu ambao kilikuwa kinamilikiwa na mtu alikuwa anaitwa muhammed said we get this evidence of killing from confession of christopher mikeo he inadhibitishwa kabisa na mauaji yaliyotokea kati ya majibizano ya mtu anaitwa Christopher Miteo. I know come to the most important part of my statement of of rather my confession. We, we were feeling out of the unused door when Kalista spotted us. He began to give chasing shooting. Sis our mission was still not to kill unfortunately one of the uh, of us muhammad said to become nervous when kalistas continue shooting and fall us deep into the jug said why why lay kalistas behind the bush hapo tunaanza kuambia kwamba huyu ni mtu ambaye alikuwa anaongea christopher miteo pamoja hapo ni watu wazi ambao ni waharibifu walikuwa anaongea maneno yake jinsi yule kalistas alikuwa mfanya kazi wa padri moyo alikuwa jinsi anawafuata akawa anapiga ana kela anasema ni wezi wezi paka alipotokea maeneo ya kichakani mwisho wa siku akawa wamemuua the gang include pambadlaus himself as the gang boss afman abdala elias msumali banabas kapinga nona mandondo and muhammed said haya yalikuwa ni magrupu ya wezi yani watu waharibifu ambao hao mmoja wapo ya hao watu waharibifu kuna mtu alikuwa anaitwa Asman Abdala Alice 
mwingine anaitwa Msumali, mwingine anaitwa Bana Banabas Kapinga, mwingine anajulikana kwa jina Madondo, Madondo and Muhammad Said. This gang involved in different theft in Songea. Hili group ilikuwa imeundwa na magroupu mbalimbali katika eneo la Songea. They could pick people's pocket at the market and at the bus station blocking people's home of lob people during night time and take away vehicle and sometimes they could lob banks. How hili group la wezi wenyewe ilikuwa walikuwa wanavunja milango ya watu walikuwa wanapokonya watu mfukoni pesa walikuwa wana wanaiba sehemu za masokoni sehemu za stand walikuwa naiba pamoja na kuwapola watu mbali mbali also we are told about the irresponsibility of police inspector known as as impagala pia bado tunazidi kuambia kwamba kuna kutowajibika kati ya hawa my police inspector anaitwa mpagala wenyewe walikuwa hawajibiki na kazi yao zidi ya ulinzi hawa waharibifu we are told that when police given information which probably needed a quick measure they could not come on time tunaambiwa kwamba hawa mapolisi walikuwa hawajibiki sana ndio maana wakipewa taarifa lakini hawalikuwa hawaji kwa muda mwafaka walikuwa wanakuja wamechelewa faza moyo claim about the police hapo tunaanza kuonyesha sasa kuna ma, ma, maongezi ya mtu anaongea kwamba faza moyo claim about the police i see all the same it would be until after two days that we are can expect the police to arrive i know these people in the process of exploring information about the murders one villager called Musa who is said to have detected the death of Kalistas was taken by the police at the hidden place hii kitendo kicho kwa taarifa inazidi kuzuka zidi ya hawa waharibifu na watu waliokufa mwana wa kijiji mmoja anaitwa Musa alisema kwamba namna ya kuwakamata watu waliomuua Kalistas walichukuliwa na polisi Musa was tortured Musa was tortured and highly humiliated by the police who forced him to mention name of the murderers mwisho wa siku Musa alikamatwa na polisi na kuanza kupigwa kichapo na kuanza kwamba awataje hao waharibifu au wauaji Musa saw them from afar what they were doing but he could not not them because the murderers were strangers and had masked their face. Musa yeye alikuwa anafikiria za maana wale watu walikuwa mbali kipindi anaona lile tukio linachotokea na wale watu walikuwa ni wengi wao ni wageni alishindwa kuwatambua. The investigation was therefore in vain because no arrest was made. Uchunguzi ulikuwa unazidi kutofika lakini hakuna kinachoonekana au tafiti unao endelea people are happy to see him back watu walifurahi walipomuona he called brother nyoka and asked him if he know the person called miteo this is the name proclaimed by father moyo's dream at eight hours on the appointed day the little court room of songa in which the chengu traditional court of ungon is to be held in filled to capacity the case indeed was strange one since it was not known who was going to be the defendant as the case goes on inspector mpagala insists that musa is the one among the killers so he should speak the truth about the murderers hapo nazidi kuendelea kupewa story zidi ya watu wauaji wanaoua walaia mbalimbali katika kijiji cha Mkongo watu wanasema kwamba Musa ndo anayewajua hao wauaji ana lazima akamatwe na atuambie ukweli kuhusu hilo jambo la uwaji seeing that what the police inspector did was nonsense the angry mob begin to advance toward inspector Mpagala and his assistants proceeding with this theft case father allow is yes cash to kafupi father then small and blaza nyoka hold a conference in the sitting room mwisho wa siku hawa mapadri wakawa wamekaa kikao kwa ajili ya kujadili kuhusu hawa wauaji na wawezi mbalimbali katika kijiji cha mkongo kafupi suggest that the case should be explained to mr patrick miringa the regional police commander 
Huyu padri kafupi ye akawa mesajesi kwamba hili jambo ndakwa tulifikishe kwa kamanda mkuu wa mkoa anaitwa Mr. Patrick Mlinga ndo atusaidia namna ya kuwakamata hawa wahalifu. This is because Mr. Mlinga is responsible, intelligent and an honest man compared to Inspector Mpagala who is the responsible man. Huyu Patrick kafupi anakuwa zidi anatuambia kwamba huyu Kamanda mkuu wa mkoa Mr. Miringa yeye ni mtu anayewajibika ni mbunifu na mwenye akili kuliko huyu Inspector Mpagala ambaye hajibiki ande ataweza kutusaidia. Now the case is presented to Mr. Miringa and furthermore told the police commander everything that is needed in this case including the suspect of the case furthermore say. So we thought of inviting you here in order to tell you information what we know and what we suspect about the theft and the murder case of Mkongo. After listening for the explanation given by Father Mo, Mr. Miringa promised to take measure on this case without any delay, Mr. Miringa said. Now, if there is anything that you know or suspect, please let me know. For from now on, I mean to take change of this case myself. I took almost two hours in that night when the all suspects are respected. First Cyprian meet for age twelve, the last born a son of Buana Pima, the medicine man who has five wives. Have a kwamba kuna padri ambaye naitwa Cyprian alikutana pamoja na Po mwenye umri kumna ambiri ambili mtoto wa mwisho wa Buana Pima ambaye ni mtu wa madawa ambaye anawake watano Paul's mother is Lozina the youngest and the most loved wife of Bwana Pima e mama wa Paul anaitwa Lozina ambaye ni mke bado ni binti ambaye ni mke wa mwisho wa Bwana Pima Lozina is the daughter of the late Julius Ndwiu Miteo and the sister of Cassa suspect Christopher Miteo Lozina ye ni mtoto wa mwisho wa mzee Julius Ndiu Miteo na ni dada wa wa Christopher Miteo Paul tells the whole situation at home and why sometimes his mother does not cook for him when he returns from school uh, Paul anazidi kutuambia kwamba a uh, story nzima tukio linalotokea nyumbani kwa nini mama yake yeye akirudi nyumbani hajapika chakula Paul say he help father with his medicine. Father bring a lot of herbs, root and tree back from the bush, and mother either pound them in the wooden mortar, or boil them, or sometimes spread the powder on a large mat. Just days, they sometimes peel some European medicine which look like beans. This information from Paul helped the investigation about this case. Mr. Miringa found Father Kachupi to tell him about the matter concerned. Huyu Mr. Miringa alimpigia simu Fadha Kachupi na kumwambia jambo linaloendelea. Listen. Fadha Kachupi. Fadha Kafupi. Yeah, speaking. We have nettled them. What? Nettled them all. Miteo, Constantini, Bwana Pima and his wife Rosina and Yomba Yomba too. You went as far as Mkongo. Of course, we started off at four hours, 22 hours, and by 24 hours, we had all of them arrested. They are all here now. How did you find Bonapima House? Well, we got village chairman first, and he took us to Bonapima place. We searched the maze barn and found Telephone bag full of terrasin caps. We then did a little arm twist and the man wife. Rosina screamed like a child. We wanted her to show us where she had buried the shells of the terrasin caps. She eventually showed us where she had buried the shells of the terrasin caps. We told her to dig out the stuff, which she did. Of course, it is fortunate that things, including government typewriter, 
amount of space part and later which may shed light on a number he said to of the cases. Hawa watu baadaye wakawa waharibifu wakawa wamekamatwa akiwepo bwana pima pamoja na mke wake na grupu lao hao ni watu ambao waliiba zile dawa za kutibu hayo maji every suspect was interrogated by two policemen but the most interesting and the most important of all statement is that made by Christopher Miteo who declared being involved in selling at Priest house He mentioned name of all who participated as man Abdallah El Arias Msumari Barnabas Kipingu and Muhammad Siti who killed Kalistas. Baadaye hao walibifu walipo wauaji walipokamatwa wakaanza kutajana wao. Wakawa wametajana wao kwa mfano kuna mtu mhalifu anaitwa Asman Abdallah Arias Msumari Barnabas Kipingu pamoja na Muhammad Siti to hao waliomuua Kalista Kalista Kalistas ambaye ndo mfanyakazi wa faza moyo. Christopher Mitel proceeded with long confession akaanzidi kuongea zidi ya huo uharibifu unaoendelea zidi ya hao watu. Now we see the judgment justice Mandwaga of Tanzania High Court to try to the case the prosecution was made by Mr. Miringa the RPC of for Uvuma region 15 years jail for Constantine Kap- Kap- Kaguru 15 years jail for Omar Mtepa Obwana Pima for adding this tips Yomba Yomba got 6 months for giving false information to the police to the police hapo naanza kuambia kwamba kwa mwisho wa siku hawa waharibifu wakawa wamekamatwa wamepelekwa mahakamani na kuhukumiwa na jaji na jaji aliyekuwa anaitwa Madwanga huyo alikuwa ni jaji mkuu wa Tanzania ambaye akawa hukumu miaka 15 jela na mtu anaitwa Constantine Kaguru miaka 15 jela Omar Mtepa au kwa jina jingine anaitwa Bwana Pima yomba yomba ambaye aliwadanganya mapolisi yeye tunamhukumu miezi sita Christopher Miteo Asmani Abdala Msumari and Banabas Kipigu Madondo were each sentenced to 15 years like the boss Constantine. Na wengine pamoja kina Christopher Mitewa, Asmani Abdala, Msumari, Panabas Kipingu, Mandondo na nao pia walipigwa miaka 15. Having been sentenced to accused allowed to appeal within 14 days. On Constantine Kakuru and Omari Bwana Pima appeal on fortune they were enhanced the sentence of 20 years each. Bwana hapo bwana pima pamoja na Konstantin Kaguru walipigwa miaka 20 jela. Going around the end page we are introduced the sugar's crisis in Songea. Mwisho wetu tunaanza kupewa tena kuna mgogoro wa sukari e, wilaya ya Songea. This is the by Bwana Ali who sell sugar in black market and they used behind door to airport them from Arabian countries which used to go as one treatment Muslim. This is a hypocrisy museum. At the end we are exposed to a at Dr. Bennett at Songea Airport at Mwanza kupewa mwisho wa siku mwanza kupewa kwamba tumefika sehemu ya bwana Dr. anaitwa Bennett so, katika kituo cha ndege Songea. He was welcome with joy at the bishop house. A simple discussion was made about where Dr. Bennett shall be posted. Dr. Bennett selected to work at Mkongo to Belamiho. Hapo tunaanza kupewa kwamba na juzi wa sehemu huyu padri hapana daktar anaitwa Bennett sehemu alikokuwa anafanya kazi. Mpenzi msikizaji, hiyo ulikuwa ni mtiliko au ilikuwa ni, ni matukio, mpangilio matukio uliopangiliwa na huyu mwandishi bwana Seven Ndunguri toka mwanzo hadi mwisho. Matukio jinsi yalivyotokea katika eneo la songea kijiji cha mkongo village watu walikuwa wanahangaika na tatizo la mlipuko wa ugonjwa wa kipindupindu mwisho wa siku eh, huyu padri alijitoa muhanga kwa ajili ya kutatua na kusovu tatizo la kipindupindu akaleta dawa lakini dawa zile zimekuja kuibwa na wale wana kijiji ambao wenyewe hawajioni hata huruma maana alikuwa na lengo la kutibu yale majo mwisho wa siku 
daktari tunaweza kupewa mwisho wa siku alikuja daktari ambaye alikuja kufanya kituo katika sehemu ya pelamio kwa ajili ya kutoa msaada mbalimbali na kutibu huo ugonjwa wa kipindupindu so let us look on characters and characters zetu tuangalie kwa usika wanaopatikana ndani ya hii diwaya au novo inaitwa les for fazamea sister gaudiosa kuna msika wa kwanza anaitwa sister gaudiosa kuna muziki wa pili anaitwa Father Vendemaya huyu ni padri marehemu ambaye anaitwa Father Maya Father Maya huyu ni padri ambaye aliuawa na alipewa heshima yake na Father Moyo ambaye alitoa taji alitoa taji au maua kwenye kaburi lake na hiyo ndo tumepata sehemu ya kupata title yetu kupata elezo kwa Father Maya kwamba ni heshima kwa padri ambaye ni ni padri Maya ambaye alipewa heshima na faza moyo na kwa kuweka taji lake maua mbalimbali yale yenye mviringo na kumpa heshima yake. Kwa title tunaipata kwa huyu padri faza Maya ambaye aliuawa na kupewa mataji au ma, maua kuwekwa kwenye kaburi lake. It is for faza Maya maana yake heshima kwa huyu padri Maya. Musika mwingine watatu wanaitwa Mpagara. Musika wa 4 anaitwa Po, musika wa 5 anaitwa Papa Andreus Gang hawa ni wa grupu la wahalifu hawa ni watu wabaya bwana Pima hawa ni wahalifu wezi Lozina ni mke wa bwana Pima ambaye naye ni mwizi kwenye grupu la wizi bwana Ali James O'Brien and the Calabrian Calustas huyu alikuwa ni mfanyakazi wa Father Padley anaitwa Moyo aliuawa na yeye grupu la wezi walimuua muziki mwingine anaitwa Father Dennis Moyo huyu ni padri eh padri Dennis Moyo ndo anayetupa title ya riwaya yetu au novo yetu ndio yeye mwenyewe aliongea maneno ya makali sana ambayo ndo anayetupa title ya ya riwaya yetu ambayo alisema elezi for fazamea kwamba hii ni heshima kwa ajili ya mataji au maua aliyotoa kwenye aliyaweka kwenye kwenye jeneza au kwenye kaburi la fazamaya ayakasema kwamba haya ni maua kwa ajili ya heshima na upendo kwa huyu padri aliyepumzika hapa ambaye ni fazamaya muziki mwingine anaitwa Adolfo Teodos Adolfo ni muziki mwingine ambaye ni mtu muongo sana ambaye kuna wadanganya watu na kuaminisha kwamba hawa mke wa mtoto wake anaumwa kwa sababu huyu ni mtu alikuwa anaamini katika masuala ya kishirikina na mkumgombeza bibi yake kwamba ndo aliyemua mtoto wake. Let us look on Zims. Tuangalie kwamba upande wa Zamira. Zamira tuso zipata Zamira ya kwanza inaitwa cholera disease. A uh, ugonjwa wa kipindupindu ndio tunasema ni this novel the novelist show mkongo village is left with a number of orphan and with them due to the cholera epidemic. Hapo tunaanza kuambia kwamba watu wengi walikufa kwa sababu ya ujanga ugonjwa wa kipindupindu na watu waliwacho wengi ni wajane pamoja na watoto yatima. Father Moyo could count not less than 20 of his. Tunaambia kwamba eh, huyu padri Moyo alihesabu zaidi ya wasiopunga watu 20 walikufa na hilo janga la eh, kipindupindu so another themes ile nsubi za mila nyingine ya pili inaitwa ile nsubi kutowajibika nani sasa mtu ambaye hajibiki unaweza kuambia this is novel the writer shows that the police could not respond to call when something occurred until further some days have elapsed with the excuse that they had not transport unaweza kuambia kwamba mapolisi wenye hawajibiki polisi hawajibiki kusaidia wanakijiji wao maana wenyewe wanapigiwa wana simu waje watoe waje washambuliane dhidi ya wahalifu au wauaji wezi lakini wana hawaji kwa muda mwafaka zamira ya tatu inaitwa kuva tu maskini in this novel the lighter shows that people who live at mkongo village are very poor tunaambia tuna, tuna kwamba katika kijiji cha mkongo village eh, wana kijiji au wana kijiji wa ile kijiji ni maskini sana wanaishi kwenye maisha magumu sana another themes which is drug abuse kuna madawa ya kulevya in this novel the light has shows that james obeying and the caribbean deal with drug all over the world ambapo tunaona kuna madawa ya kulevya dhidi ya hawa kuna watu wanafanya biashara ya madawa ya kulevya duniani kuna mtu anaitwa james obrien pamoja na caribbean wana deal na masuala ya madawa ya kulevya dhamira nyingine tunaoipata katika kitabu hii pamoja pia hivi tuangalie upande wa conflict mikokoro iliyoibika kuna personal conflict this is conflict appeal appear when father moyo is thinking much on how to help the village from calamity kuna mgogoro wa kibinafsi ambaye naye anataka father moyo alikuwa anajiuliza zidi ya huyo mgogoro wa kibinafsi kwamba kivipi ataweza kuwasaidia wale wanakijiji wanavyohangaika na hili gonjwa la 
Another conflict between Adolf Torres and Fazamoro. Kuna mkokoro mwingine wa pili unaojitokeza kidi ya huyu padri anaitwa Fazamoro pamoja na mtu mwingine anaitwa Adolf Torres. So this conflict image when Adolf Torres went to the church and make quarrels with her grandmother accusing her to be which is his son who was sick at the moment on seeing that father more is trying to save the old woman from being hurt the, the young man Adolf Torres I don't know kwamba kwamba huyo kijana anazidi kujibizana na huyo kijana zidi kujibizana na huyo padri more na kubishana na kuambiana maneno mabaya kwamba anamwambia yeye hajaza hata mtoto ndio maana hajui uchungu wa mwana anaza conflict between inspector Mpagala and the and the angry mob tunaanza mgogoro mwingine wa pili kati ya inspector Mpagala na this conflict image when inspector Mpagala insists that the priest of Mkong also is responsible for the murder of Kalistas but all the present claim are neglected before the king since that what the police inspector did was nonsense the angry mob begin to advance toward the inspector mpagala and disaster na watu ndio kuna mgogoro ulizuka kati ya inspector mpagala ambaye yeye anazidi ku kuasistiza kusistiza na kuwaombea watu wa mkongo na wajibike masuala ya mauaji ya kuzidi ya kalistas ndio maana kuna mgogoro uko umeibuka mgogoro mwingine the conflict between the government and the pandalous gang ngogoro mwingine uliyoibuka kati ya serikali pamoja na grupu hawa la wauaji la grupu la wezi ambaye nani sasa this conflict image when pandalous gang involved in theft of stealing terrace getron and the man of kalista who is the father of house seven hapo tunaweza kwamba kuna ngogoro sasa mbili uliyoibuka kati ya serikali na grupu la wezi kwa sababu walimuua mfanyakazi wa padri moyo let us look on position of women and the role of women. The position of women is the social status of women. Within the threat is accordance to traditional attitude dictated by the culture of the society. The role of women as a cultural obligation and responsibility of the female members of any society. Women as sympathetic as a simple person mwanamke kaonyeshwa kwamba ni mtu mwenye huruma mwenye moyo wa, wa huruma in this not the light show the sister gaudiosa feel sympathy with calista's death tunaweza kwamba kuna dada anaitwa gaudiosa alijisikia vibaya kwa huzuni kwamba mauaji ya huyu mfanyakazi anaitwa calista sisi also women portrayed as faithful person it is not the light a show sister gaudiosa handle the remained cartoon to the, to father more because she thinks that capsule can be used on wise servants kwamba eh, mwanamke kachorwa au kaonyeshwa kama ni mtu ambaye ni ni mtu ambaye anepigania kitu fulani also women portrayed as a weak person in the court kwamba mwanamke kachorwa kama mtu dhaifu ambaye hajiwezi in this novel the light show lozina bwana pima's youngest and loved wife screaming like a child in the show the investigation has the press where the shell of terror after same men twist her arm au kwamba kwa mwanamke yeye ni mtu ambaye ni dhaifu eh na tena ni muoga kwa mfano mke wa bwana pima anaitwa lozina alianza kuwataja watu wa harifu walipokamatwa also women portrayed as a woman is the truth for enjoyment kwamba ni chombo cha starehe this novel the lighter shows the bwana pima has five wives who use them as tool of enjoyment for his sexual desire kwamba mwanamke ni chombo cha starehe ndio maana bwana pima alikuwa na wake watano ndo lozina alikuwa ni mke binti ndogo mke watano so also let us look on message message that found in this novel theft and gain hindering development in a certain community therefore government is should provide severe punishment of offenders kwamba ujumbe tunaopata kwamba wezi na magroupe mapaya ndio kikwazo cha kutoendelea katika taifa letu pamoja na jamii zetu government should alleviate poverty from regional level because it become a source of eruption of epidemic disease like cholera kwamba serikali lazima ipigane zidi ya umaskini katika ngazi ya kitaifa na kimkoa kwa lengo la kusaidia hasa e, kuenea kwa au mlipuko wa ugonjwa wa mpindupindu the police officer should respect human life and law 
of law in our country because torturing people who are still suspect is against the law. Kwamba maafisa police maafisa police lazima waheshimu haki za binadamu na kufuata sheria kwa ajili ya kulinda haki za raia. Drug dealers exist in our country but the government is quiet on them due to the nepotism and the weakness of some leaders kwamba wauzaji wa madawa ya kulevya in katika nchi zetu serikali lazima ipiganie wa chane na yose. so let us look on title tuangalie title ya kitabu chetu kinazungumza kitu gani kwamba unaelewaje unaposoma elezo for Let's for further mail. The title used in this novel implies the readers to know what is inside the book. The novelist has succeeded to show why he has named the book a less for further mail. The title extracted after furthermore visited European countries one morning when he is passing through a small village. On his way neighboring village in German at the Benedictine monasteries of Saint Otrien, where most of the white missionaries in Songea diocese had come from and the place where Father Vitas Ma is buried. Mpenzi msikilizaji, title ya kitabu chetu au novo yetu, kwa nini mwandishi ameamua kukiita Eles for Father Mayor? Kwa sababu gani? Kuna siku moja huyu padri moyo alienda kufadha madawa katika nchi nchini Uingereza kwa ajili ya kuja kutibu huu ugonjwa wa kolera. Lakini yeye ali Ali, pita kijiji kidogo sana katika nchi ya Ujerumani na kukuta eh, kabuli la huyu padri Father Vitas Meyer na ile sehemu walikuwa ni watu wengi kutoka nchi ya Songea walikuwa wanaenda ile sehemu na aliamua kusemaje sasa Father Meyer knows some lovely flower and is asking the forest to prepare a lace for connection and roses from him this is to be a lace for Father Meyer the title of the book kwamba mshu wa siku yeye eh, aliyekuwa na ni Father Meyer akabidi atoe oda akachukua akamwambia yule mtengenezaji maua kwamba atengeneze ile ua la mviringo na maua ambayo nilimpendezesha aende akaweke maua kwenye kaburi la huyu padri anaitwa Father Vitas Maya kwa kaenda na baadaye akasema kwamba hili hili ua haya maua ni kwa ajili elezi for father akaita elezi for father Maya kwamba ni upendo ni tumaini ni majonzi dhidi ya huyu padri mwenzangu ambaye anaitwa Father Maya ndio tunapa title ya kitabu naipata kwa huyu padri anaitwa Fadha Moyo ndio anayetupa hii title ya kitabu kizima kwa Fadha hili ua haya maua ni kwa ajili ya mwenzangu aliyepumzika hapa chini ambaye anaitwa Fadha Vitas Maya he replaced them on grave on Fadha Maya as symbol of respect and an honor of him kwamba hii inaonyesha kwamba huyu Fadha Moyo alienda kuwe kwenye kaburi la huyu padri ikiwakisha kwamba ni amani na upendo kwake huyo. So let us look on set. Tuangalie manzari. Manzari ya hii hii novel au kitabu au riwaya. Kwamba manzari yake ni wapi? The novel is set in Tanzania and other some part in Europe. Kwamba manzari ya hii riwaya ni, ni nchi ni Tanzania. Baadhi ya sehemu zingine nchi ya Europe. The main and important in province in Tanzania including Mkongo, a small village in Songea district and Ruvuma, regional sub Catholic mission station Pilamiho, the main Catholic mission station where Bishop Makita works in Dar es Salaam International Airport. Maeneo ambayo yanaonyesha kwamba ni Tanzania kwamba ni kijiji cha Mkongo katika wilaya Songea mkoa wa Ruvuma na pia tunapewa sehemu za Pelamio huko Songea na pia sehemu za Dar es Salaam ambapo eh, huyu eh, askofu Makita alikuwa anafanya kazi. In Europe there are two important provinces Birmingham the fun city in London and the German Benedictine monastery of St Olsen the place where Father Maya the founder of the church at Mkongo was buried kwamba tunaweza kwamba hapa tunaweza kupewa kwa nini ukiwa uingereza uingereza kuna baadhi ya sehemu setting kama London kuna sehemu hizo pamoja na maeneo ya Ujerumani ndio sehemu ndio maana Father Maya ndio mtu wa kwanza kabisa kufika katika kijiji cha Mkongo na kuanzia masuala ya kanisa ndio maana alipewa taji alipewa heshima yake alipewa maua yake ikiwa ni heshima kwamba ni heshima kwa ajili ya Padri Maya ambaye ndio mtu wa kwanza kugundua na kufika ile kijiji cha Mkongo na maana alipewa so the plot 
The novel has flashback narration as event expressed do not narrated the chronological kwamba. Mpangiwa wa matukio ulio pangiwa kwenye hii liwaya. Ni matukio ya kinyuma. E, ni matukio ambayo yanaonyesha kuna flashback nyingi sana. Kuna matukio ambayo yani yanaonyesha ya hajapangiliwa kwa mtiliko. Matukio mengine ameanza yamepishana pishana. First we are introduced about cholera epidemic disease at Mkongo village. Then further Moyo is in Dar es Salaam airport and then Britain and then in a plane where James O'Brien hide and hush in the father bay. Moja also to manza moja to mambio kwamba to nambio kwamba kunam ripuko a gonjo kole wa pindu pindu. Kadika gi jam kongo. Father Father Moya amenda Dar es Salaam. Amenda Dar es Salaam kwenye kituo cha ndege. Kisha amenda kuingereza kwa ndege. Ambapo James of Brieng had a hush in Father Big. After what, we are introduced in conversation between Father Moyo and the Bishop of Makita, which occurred before Father Moyo journey to Europe. Na pia wano tumerudisho matukio la nyuma, ambapo kabla hajaenda, lakini Father Moyo, ye pamoja na na, na skofu Makita, walikuwa na zungumza kwa ajili ya safari, haende Europe. Haende Europe. Mpenzi msikizaji hapa ndo tunafika tamati e, nimefika tamati ya hii riwaya novo inayoitwa LS for Father Mea kwamba ni, ni heshima kwa padri anaitwa Hemaya ndo maana yake ya kitabu asanteni sana kwa kunisikiliza kwa majina naitwa teacher Kaligo Dr. Njige mwalimu wa fasihi ya Kiingereza nipo katika chuo kikuu cha Katoliki Mwenge ni mwaka wa tatu toka mwaka 2019 nimekuja hadi namaliza mwaka 2022 tarehe 15 mwezi wa 8 asanteni sana kwa kunisikiliza usije kusahau kusubscribe ku like ku na ku chini ya hii video asanteni